Hello and welcome everybody to round 5 of the TFR Summer Super Cup from Circuit du Spa Francochamps. We have got a still fairly strong grid here. I have managed to count up, I think it's actually 12 Corvettes and 8 Ford GTs that will be taking the start. Um, I'll try and enter as much of the order as I can because I've not got long. They obviously don't use the full formation lap here. Taking pole position for the Corvettes was Tapani Linaluoto, second place was Fauk Manzar, third place was David Ward, fourth Arthur Kirk Polson, fifth was Yuha Pai, sixth was Rob uh, Stratemans, uh, seventh was Simon Geimer, eighth was Christian Nielsen, ninth was Dave Geimer, tenth Jano Matikinen, eleventh was Chris Partridge. In the Ford GT field, Nick Vestigi took the pole with Mark Bird second, Stefan Coppens was third, Robert Lowry qualified himself in fourth, Roderick Crunen managed to get fifth, Rainer Utani was sixth, Willem Pienaar was seventh, and Toby Bushell, not setting a lap, will start eighth in that field. So, moving around, to take a start here, just behind the pace car. I think we're going to be going before, uh, well, unlike at Mid-Ohio last week where we had a custom start position, I think we're just going as soon as the pace card goes. Indeed we are, there's the green flag and the number 12 of Barney Lenaglioto has absolutely shot off the line and David Ward's making a good start in the Corvette as well. We have got the 40 T's. Close on the tail, and the Vestigi's made a good start there. No action so far, so you can see. Um, we've had a spin feather back. Now, is that? He's gone round. Oh, David Ward. He spent a long time ago. There's a lot of damage to that car. Just missed out on myself. My handy candy man, camera man. There. I'm going to get killed for that one later on. Here's Yoni Backman today. We've still got. Leonardo Luoto leading as he just blinks a little bit. Arthur Kirk Paulson is in second with Yuha Pai in third. Everyone streamed through a side by side action with Simon. Yep, Simon Geimer. I was about to get the Geimer brothers mixed up and Yano A. Maitakinen as Dave Geimer is now having a go for that position, which is 10th overall. Chris Partridge currently lying last of the bulk pack of those Corvettes. Big Vestigi in the 4GTs has pulled out a lead already with Stefan Coppens, Mark Bird, and Roderick Crunen close behind with the rest of the pack in pursuit. Looks like Yano is sizing up Simon Geimer for a move here. Definitely got the quicker of the two cars. We'll see how that one pans out. And we apologise for the our broadcast, we've not moved the correct channel, so people just hopping in. Uh, Stephen Van Helsingen, who I forgot to mention in our grid walk, number 42 Corvette, working his way through our cabin to start from pit lane, not making a qualifying lap. Currently in car with Jano Mackinen. There we go, I got your name eventually. Uh, following Simon Geimer and being hassled by Dave Geimer, maybe the team were going to come into play here from those Geimer brothers, although Dave is under pressure from Rob Straitmans. Both the, le the leaders of both classes really streaking away, Nick Vestigi for the four GTs and Tapaini for uh, Tapani rather for the Corvettes. I wonder, did, yep, yeah, I think so, Arthur Kirk Paulson just got a slowdown, and that's going to let Yuha Pai, and Farouk Mansar, who else is going to get through on him, Neil Slayan, and that's it, so he's dropped three positions there, now down to fifth in the Corvette standings, after running really well in second, he's going to get a bit of hassle from Simon Geimer here, if he doesn't get back going quickly. As we've got Manzar 
side by side with Pi just for a moment there. A very good overtake manoeuvre as it happens. So Manza now second in the Corvette. He ended up making his way forward after a not fantastic start. And we have got Kirk Paulson attacking now. So, oh, I've just skipped straight past. That's Christian Nislian. And he's going round the outside. That's an impressive move there. He's definitely got the legs and the grip on Christian. And we've got a bit of side-by-side -side for GTs. Uh, it's Toby Bushnell has just gone and made a move on Renault Tani. Good bit of driving there from Toby. Having started from pit lane, he is having to do a lot of making up. Everything just settling down a bit, although as I say, it looks like we've got Christian Nielsen and some serious pressure from Simon Geimer. It seems like this little pack from 5th all the way back to 9th is really closing up. They're all about the same pace and can't quite get away. The drafting on the straights here at Spa always makes for close racing. As Paulson, having made his mistake, is now doing his best to catch back up to Juha and Fayouk. And we've got a bit of side by side, is that? Uh, yes, it is. It looks like Yano is having to defend from Dave Geimer. As Dave looks to the outside, he's going to struggle to make it round there, and indeed he has to slot back into line and lose a bit of ground. Maybe just a poor run out of Eau Rouge there for Yano. Barney Benaglioto has absolutely shot away at the front. There's already a good five or so seconds for him in that lead. In fact, it was a lot more than that. It was seven and a half seconds at the line last time by. And, oh, Yano's made a mistake. I'm just going to put it for that. Yeah, he went wide. And it looked like Rob Streetman has also had a moment further back and he's lost loads of time there he's halfway back into the or GT pack well not halfway back but he's behind the majority that's all the way back tough call for him and tough call for Yana as well to have lost all the ground that he had made up Only coming up on 10 minutes into this 90 minute race that we're having here at Spa today and already plenty of action on the track, plenty of moving around in positions and well, spins and accents, but delivering what we expect it to on cue all of the time as Jano Matakainen attempts to get himself back on terms with the Geimer brothers. And David Ward has reappeared in pit lane, so it looks like he's going to try and get his car repaired and get back out on track. Now I'm going to look at Mark Bird, who's currently sitting second in the 4GT class, uh, just running in tandem with his teammate, Stefan Coppens, both of which are having themselves kept in check by Robert Lowry, who is running the same pace, about half a second behind. Toby Bushnell though, he's a man on his charge, going quicker than most of the people up ahead of him in the 4GT after having made that start from pit lane. It'll be interesting to see how he progresses through this race. Uh, all, has all has fallen quiet as we show some in-car with Toby, but Jarno Matikainen has just gone off the track again. Well collected there, it could have been a lot worse than it was. But losing more time to the other cars in class is not going to be helping his race. I know it's a long one, but 
You put yourself back far enough, you'll never be able to make it up. Got a nice band going on towards the back of the 4GT field here between Roderick Croonan and Willem Pienaar. As they're both just pushing it a bit, going out wide. Uh, Roderick Croonan was qualified higher up than this, so I believe he either had a bad style, made mistakes. He dives up the inside, that was very late, and used the curve to his advantage there, helping him turn the car through the corner. Willem's got no reply to that and I think that Roderick will just shoot off into the distance now and Willem will just have to settle back and turn laps hoping that other people in front of him spin off to give him a better track position everyone spinning out a bit more now the closest cars on track are still the two that we're just looking at but both Simon and Dave Geimer are very close together as well. They are teammates, so I, I can't imagine that they'll be making any silly moves on each other, but it would be interesting to watch if they do get right together on track, as Dave Geimer has made some serious inroads coming up. The long straight there, and sorry, the, the name has gone from the, the name of the straights and corners. I'll get them to you as soon as I turn myself back on. It's Simon and Dave definitely closer together. If they start tripping over each other it'll give um, Yano a better chance to catch up and make up for the mistakes he's been making in these first few laps. Much closer together now for both Dave and Simon, but I imagine they're communicating with each other and coordinating how to best keep themselves out of the way of people around them instead of having a fight this early on in what is a very long race. We have recently had Stephen Van Helts Dingen get past Chris Partridge, so uh, an impressive start there from Stephen start from pit lane whereas Chris started with the rest of the pack and he's managed to fight his way into what is the bulk of the Corvette field now albeit a good four or five seconds behind the next guy up the road which is Giano still got David Ward repairing his Corvette in the pit lane after that first lap spin bit of a disaster story for him so far but I'm sure he'll be happy to get back out on track and just try and make up positions if other people make similar mistakes to him. Uh, to Toby Bushnell again, I mean he's caught right up to the second, third, fourth group in the 4GT field. Absolutely flying at the moment. be interesting to see what he does as these guys in front get spread out and get themselves lapping pretty quickly. Just gone about a second quicker than Mark Bird though. So these four are all going to bunch themselves up very soon. We could have a nice four-way battle for the second spot on the podium. Although Nick Vestigi has truly checked out and run away already. Both Simon and Dave Guyman are still close together. Whether they're tripping each over each other or not, Jano Matikainen is closing in quickly. So, he could be having a three-way battle for the sixth position overall and a four-way battle for the second spot on the podium in the four GTs very soon. Two obvious groups of cars starting to emerge here. But producing good racing 
as it always seems to do, despite being probably, in, well, in my opinion at least, the most demanding track on iRacing, especially in big lumbersome and cars like these GTs and Corvettes. Currently watching Dave Geimer make his way through Blanchemont. Just having to slow it down a bit more than he wanted to there on the brakes. Lots of understeer through the fast corners in these Corvettes. That engine hanging over the front axle does not help your grip. You'd think it does, but it just helps the car wash out on the front. As Dave getting a bit twitchy there, making a mistake. This is allowing Yano to latch onto it. I wouldn't be surprised if Yano gets a good run down through a rouge here, he could well have the position by the time we hit the second sector. We'll watch that one for now and see what goes on. Yano a bit too far back, and uh, that was me being optimistic for him I think, but he is now a part of the battle again, part of that group. As Simon Geimer capitalising on the little mistake made there by Dave and just giving himself a little cushion which will no doubt increase if Yano starts dicing with Dave Looks like they are getting themselves ready for a little dice As he 4GT pack has spread back out despite that promise of a four-way battle. They all seem to be holding their ground at the moment, so we'll focus on this Yano, Matikainen, and Dave Geimer battle that's wanting to get itself underway. Yano having moved back a bit now, but he's definitely the quicker of the two cars, so no doubt something will come of this very soon. May have just made a mistake entering Puom. We are watching Yano Matikainen hunt down Dave Geimer. He's surely mindful of the mistakes that he has made already when trying to get past people and racing in a close, tight together pack in this race. So he's going to be taking his time and watching himself having a personal best lap last time round, which was nearly two seconds quicker than the lap that Dave Geimer set and Simon Geimer as all three of them have come back together now Simon setting the weakest of those three laps this time by so all three of them right together and it looks like it may well come up on Christian Nielslian soon because he has either made a mistake somewhere or has just been lapping slower because he went even slower than all three of those guys that time by because Jan has had a poor exit and a poor run through Oru so he's dropped off the back but Dave Geimer now very very close to Simon and a run surely in the books here will it make a move probably not it's a bit far back I'm just gonna hold it in line and try not to trip over each other and get another car involved although they're just not gonna be able to do that with Yano's pace at the moment And David Ward is back out on track, but his car is, for me at least, looking a bit worse for wear. I have to keep an eye on how he's doing. He's currently holding up, and a little miscommunication there between himself and... Oh my goodness! David Geimer and Farouk Mazar. Absolutely huge accident. I'll have to rewind and have a look at what happened there, because I am not sure at all. David Ward has immediately gotten off. Uh, it looks like David Ward turned across him. It looked like he just turned straight into him. Now I wonder if that spin at the beginning of the race for David Ward was a contact. I'm just looking back to check now. 
Indeed it was. The contact at the beginning of the race, David Ward, turned by Farouk Manzar. So, there was a definite move across in that incident from David Ward. It'll be interesting to see what the race administration will think of that one afterwards. As Yano, in, in that time that that accident's happened, Yano Matakainen has made his way past Dave Geimer and is now working on catching back up to Simon, who in turn is working on catching up to Christian. So, again, the close racing getting ever closer here at Spa. Everyone from third back in the Corvette field now promoted a position due to Farrakh Manzar retiring after that incident. Drama in first 20 minutes of this race, so I hope we don't see any more incidents like that. Instead, just good racing, which it looks like Yano Matakainen is getting ready to provide for us by sizing up Simon for a move. This looks like a good run to me. Really have a look. He pokes his nose out, but he's not going to put it any further alongside than he wanted to there. Same Fernie behind and waiting for a better opportunity. Oh, and there's a mistake from Simon that that is the only invitation that Yano needed. Looks like they're going to go side by side through some... No, they're not. Simon has let him in. So, for a minute there I thought we were going to see side by side as Yano rides the kerbs, which can lead to heartbreak in these cars, but he managed to keep it together. Simon putting his nose to the inside, but nothing will come of that. Yano Matakainen finally has made up two positions on Simon and Dave Geimer. As now the Geimer brothers are brought back together on track be interesting to see if Dave makes a move or looks for one now that he has closed back up onto Simon Geimer. Yano, the attacker that he has been so far this race, now hunting down a struggling Christian Nislian. Further forward. Arthur Paulson just gradually gaining on Yuha Pai. Or P. I, I, I don't know how to say that. You'll have to inform me after the race, Yuha. I've just I've just had P shouted in my ear, so I'll use that one from now on. We have actually lost one of our four GTs, have we? I believe so. Yep, yeah, Robert Lowry has disappeared from the timing screens. He must have had an incident because... Well, there we go, he's just disconnected now. So, I'm going to have a quick look to see what happened whilst everything is quiet on the track. And as I say that, Yano has gone and gotten himself a run on, I believe, yep, yeah, that's Christian. Well, let's have a look at what's going on here. Will Yano make a move? It's a dangerous place to look. He's not going to poke his nose to the inside coming up to Blanchemont. He is going to wait for the bus stop at the end of the lap. Is he going to throw it up the inside and be aggressive? Yes, he is. Get that slowed down for the apex. Plenty of room given there by Christian who tries to stay alongside but doesn't quite have the overlap. And Yano's got that move done. He's exposed Christian Nuslian to Simon and Dave Geimer who are now right on his ale. He's not going to be happy about that. He's been um, impeded even more than he would have liked. He gets it loose. There at the, the exit of the first corner. Going down the hill, I wonder if either of the Gohan brothers will have a go at him. Probably not this lap, they're a bit far back. 
Will he get this draft and have a look back at Yano, I wonder? He's close enough to do something about it. He's going to go to the outside and to Diamond and Dave, looking either side of each other. Not enough to do anything with it from there, Christian. So he's just going to have to slot back into line. No real other overtaking opportunities now until the end of the lap for these Corvettes. So now we have got a battle back in the Ford GT field, and it is Roderick Crunen and Willem Pinger. And I'm pretty sure earlier on I said that Roderick would run away with this one, but he obviously hasn't. Either that or he's made mistakes. They're back together. Also, more revelations in the 4GT field. We've got Bushnell making inroads on Stefan Coppens. And I, yep, that's for third position in the 4GT class. So we'll keep an eye on that one. Battle for a podium is always good. As Krunen has made his way back past Pineup. And both of them are nearly getting, well, they are getting ready to get lapped by our GT1 leader, our Corvette leader, who we've not heard much from this race, seeing as he has absolutely run away with it. Less than half an hour in, the 22 second lead for Tapani Linaliotto. Looking now, Toby Bushnell really, really close behind Stefan Coppens, sizing himself up for a move as, yep, yeah, it looks like Tabani has managed to make his way through on those 4 GT safely. Toby Bushnell now. The fight for third position, it's, fair, it's nose to tail. I mean, these guys have the same pace pretty much, and it's going to be a case of the first one to blink is going to lose it. Mark Bird has made himself a nice gap for second, and in turn, Nick Steve has made himself a nice gap on absolutely everybody in the 4 GT race so far. Of course, we'll be expecting pit stops in the next 30 minutes from both classes. It'll be interesting to see how they pan out. I'm pretty sure neither class can make this one on the full tank. Uh, I've just been informed that they can't, showing that I really do don't do my homework properly, neither can make it on the full tank, so we are expecting pit stops soon, but... So yeah, definitely expecting those pit stops soon, it looks like Toby Bushnell's made a little error, and falling back from Stefan Coppins again. Oh, and we've had an incident. It's Willem Pinar has done. What's he gone and done there? Oh, that was just a mistake in the chicane after the run out of O'Rouge. Oh, I, he's gone up on his side and just about kept it on all fours. He's going to lose loads of time in that one. He's kind of cramming badly now. Bad luck for Willem today. Not running as well as he'd like to. Now we are having a look at Pani Linal Yoto, our Corvette leader. And, um, what? It would be unfair to say that he is dominating at the moment. He is absolutely destroying the rest of the Corvette field. Through show of class here from the Finnish driver.
We have recently lost Rob Stratemans, one of our Corvette drivers. He was having bad luck. He had, had an early spin and was back behind the four GTs and he's obviously had another incident and decided to call it a day. Robert Lowry, just for those of you wondering, had a bit of a moment at the end of his lap and put it in a tyre barrier coming out through the sweepers and had to call it a day after that one obviously a bit too much damage on the car to continue so he unfortunately lost what was a really good 4GT position a while ago now and we've got Simon and Dave Geimer who seem to be working together to a certain extent here right up behind Christian Mislier that they nearly run into each other a bit of a checker there It'll be interesting to see what happens as William Pinar has had to retire after that incident. I'm not surprised as car was going sideways around the entire track. It is surely only a matter of time before Simon Geimer decides to make a move on Christian because he's only losing time behind him. The closest battle on track really now, after those Corvettes have spread themselves back out again, is Toby Bushnell and Stefan Coppens, who look like they're trying to have a battle, just keep accordioning with each other. As Christian's gone wide, Muslian's gone wide, and that's allowed this group to close back up again, and that two Geimer brothers just darting left and right across the track. It looks like Christian's struggling with his car. Understeer, oversteer, it's just doing nothing that he wants it to. He's really having to push just to hold position at the moment. Dave Geimer had a look towards Pill on there, but if you go up the inside, there's just going to be a crash. There's nothing you can do about it. You have to stay in line for that corner. Christian again, just oversteer on entry and understeer all the way through the middle. He can't get the power down on the exit either. He's really struggling. I wonder if Simon Geimer, just to protect his own race, will be talking to Dave at the moment saying, just stick behind me because there's not much longer until Christian makes a mistake that's going to cost him positions, which is the way it looks at the moment. I mean, Christian is just wrestling that car around the track and everyone else in the Corvette seems to be having an OK time fit. Uh, another very close battle on track at the moment is Roderick Crunen, who's caught up to Reno Tani. Uh, that's way back in the 4GT field, but we'll keep an eye on that one and see how it pans out for them. And Christian's made a mistake. And Simon and Dave Geimer have gone through. I'm just going to have a little rewind myself and have a look what happened there. Looks like he's just gone and run on at the bus stop, yet. Yeah. He has outbraked himself and made a number of mistakes through the bus stop chicane and just uh, had to let both of the Geimer guys through on him. Not a lot that you can do when you make a mistake like that. He's going to have a look back at Dave Geimer. Dave is defending hard. It looks like he's going to hold the position now. A bit of defensive driving there for Dave Geimer. As both Dave and Christian try and go a bit wide. All of this, interestingly, has allowed the charging Stephen Van Helsdingen to catch back up to them. So, no doubt we'll be seeing him trying to make his way through on Christian Nuslian in just a few laps. Looking further forward, and we've missed it, but Roderick Crunen has made the move. Oh, and we've got Coppins and... Toby Bushnell were just side by side there. And 
looks like nothing has come of it. Yeah, Toby was on the wrong side of the track through the bus stop, so he's just had to get back into line. Oh, Toby Bushnell's pirouetted it. Now that's ended that bass prematurely. He's not hit anything, so provided he can just keep it going and get back on track, which is what he's going to do, no problem, but he's lost tons of time there. Unlucky for Toby Bushnell, who's really pushing on and trying to get himself into a podium position. It's all just fallen away there with a bit too much right foot. Very, very, very unlucky. So, about 10 minutes away from the halfway mark in this race, and a few battles that we did have earlier on have just gone and resolved themselves in a matter of a lap or two. Roderick Crunen and Reno Tani still close together, but I think Roderick will pull away from this battle no problem at all. Mistakes pending, of course. closest cars on track, still Simon and David Eimer, though they look to be doing a bit of a procession as a team today. Neither of them have made a move on each other as of yet. They have just been holding position and gaining ground where they can. Clean racing is good racing, and that's what they're doing. Okay, well, as we do approach the halfway mark, everything has quietened down. No one really racing anybody. And I will do my best to keep an eye on the action. But in the meantime, we have got something pretty interesting for you, the viewer. We have got what is a lap guide. And uh, I'm hoping to get a name through my headphones any moment now to tell me who made that guide. Uh, it's Roderick Crunen has made this track guide for you so we're going to play it now and we'll see you just as soon as it finishes this is a lap in the 4GT on iRacing.com's virtual circuit spot Just after the start-finish line, we enter the first turn, La Source. Then at the downhill run, to the infamous turn, Eau Rouge. Next, we enter the Kemmel Strait and let the car fly. As you reach top speed on the Kemmel Strait, you should remind yourself not to overdrive the Ford GT on this track. We're now entering Le Combe and immediately aligning the car for the next turn, Malmedini. The next turn is Rivage, where late braking is possible and there are several good lines. After a quick left-hander and a short straight, we come upon the double left-hander, Long. There is really only one quick line through this section, and it's difficult to maintain in the 4GT. Up next is the right-left-hander, Fenye. We will use all of the right side of the exit to accelerate, but move to the left as soon as possible to line up for the next turn, Stavilo. Exit speed from Stavilo is very important because of the high speed section that follows.
Coming up to Blasher Mall, again, there is only one fast line through this turn, and it requires a small tap on the brakes. Running it too hot will bring the car wide over the curves and will result in a 1x and a possible invalid qualifying lap. Having gone through the fastest corner of the track, we now come to the last but slowest corner of the track. This turn is called Nouvelle Chicane, although a lot of people still call it the bus stop chicane. This concludes a lap of spa driven by Nick Verstea in the Radicals Online Steel Series 4 GT. Hello and welcome back to round five of the TFR Summer Super Cup. 90 minutes of racing here at Spa. And as we do approach that halfway point, we have got our first car on pit lane, which is Reno Tani in the 4GT class. He was just passed by Roderick Croynan a few laps ago, so obviously making the decision to pit early, ask questions later and try and get a bit of an undercut here on the other cars that were close to him at the time. Everyone's still very spread out there. There is a not a great deal going on after the intense drama that we had earlier in the race. Whilst I have got time to breathe, I'll take you through the current running order of the race. I'll start out with the Corvettes, leading by an astonishing half a minute at this stage in the race is Tapani Linaluoto. In second place is Yuha P. In third is Arthur Kirk Polson. In fourth, Jano A. Matikainen. Fifth position is Simon Geimer with his brother Dave Geimer in sixth. Seventh position is Christian Nuslian. Eighth position, Stephen Van Helstingen. The remaining running Corvette is Chris Partridge, who is currently in ninth position, with Rob Stretemans, Baruch Manzai, and David Ward currently retired from the race. We saw intense drama and possibly frustration between Baruch Manzai and David Ward earlier on. That will definitely be one to look back and no doubt discuss afterwards between the drivers. The Ford Pack, uh, Nick Vestigi is leading by quite some margin over Mark Bird and Stefan Coppens, the two, I believe they are TFR cars. Very close together, running in tandem. Uh, fourth position, he was looking for that third, Toby Bushnell had a spin, now just circulating the healthy fourth position. Fifth position is Roderick Crunan. And the remaining circulating for GT is Reno Tani, who made his pit stop. And so he should now be able to race to the end, seeing as we are roughly halfway through this one. As we watch Reno Tani do a few more laps, it's uh, Nick Stigi, the leader of his his race as such, just up behind him. I imagine that Nick will be looking to pit within the next three or four laps. Had a, another few people take to pit lane recently. I'm not 100% sure of who. May have had a Corvette in. I believe we have had a Corvette in. I think we've had Dave Geimer it rode. Yep, he is a few positions further back than he was originally, so he's obviously decided to move out of the slipstream of Simon Geimer, make a pit stop and see if he can't gain positions through pit stops instead of having to race his teammate. No one really close on track at the moment. Uh, Nick Vestigi made his way past Reno Tani just a few moments ago, and that puts Reno a lap down. But Nick Nick still has a pit stop to make, and we'll be keeping an eye on when the leaders of both classes do make that pit stop. As in fact, the leaders of both classes are about to 
meet each other on the track for the second time so far, I believe. Is it, no, it's the first time. I'm talking a load of rubbish. So, Barney Leonardo Yoto, the Corvette leader, ooh, gets extremely close to Reno Tani. And uh, we've got Christian Nusli in, in the pit. <laughs> He'll be very happy to get a set of tyres to actually work on that car, no doubt. Yep, yeah, we did also just have a moment there between Tapani Lenan Luoto and Reno Tani. I'd not have wanted to be in either of those cars because I'm pretty sure that they're both sporting brown trousers now. And the two leaders, Lenan Luoto and Vestigi, with each other on track. I think it's about time Stigi hit pit lane. I'm um, thinking it's this time or next time for him, really. The 4GT doesn't have enough fuel capacity to go much longer. We'll watch him now. He's not pissing yet. Uh, continuing on, just stretching out this first stint as long as he can. Nick for Stigi. Give a mention to Chris Partridge. We have not spoken about him so far this race. He's been circulating towards the back of the Corvette field, but circulating consistently, and it's gaining positions through people dropping out so far. He is ahead of Dave Geimer. Dave Geimer, who's made his pit stop and is now catching back up. We'll see if those two have a little battle or if uh, Chris pits before they manage to. as Toby Bushnell hits pit lane. Fourth position for GT and he decides to get as close as physically possible to the wall on entrance. I think he did just about miss it and save himself some repairs in that pit stop. I've got Steven Van Hellstingen, the second of the Corvettes to hit pit road. Yeah, obviously switching between the European and American version of pit lane, pit road. I'm sure, well, I hope that no one will mind me being inconsistent like that. Everyone really spread out at the moment. The closest guys on track are Dave Geimer and Chris Partridge. But... I don't think they're going to get a chance to battle because... Oh no, Chris Partridge hasn't gone to pit road, so they might still have a little tussle yet. Toby Bushnell has made his way back out on track after his pit stop. And Stephen Van Helsingen is getting ready to do the same. He's actually made up quite a lot of time, has he? Yep, he has jumped Christian Nislian in the pit stops and pulled himself right up towards the back of Dave Geimer. So, some good strategy and good laps put in at the end of his stint there for Stephen Van Helsting. Nick for Stigi, still out on track. Really pushing the fuel tank on that Ford GT. Keeping an eye on the two TFR cars in the Ford GT class, circulating in second and third. That's Mark Bird and Stefan Coppens, respectively. As Stefan Coppen struggling with front end grip a little at the moment. Mark Bird remains out on track, but Stefan Coppens does not. He goes to pit lane. He's followed in by UHP in the Corvette, uh, second position in Corvette, and about to be demoted to third as Arthur Kirk Paulson stays out on track and will no doubt try and put in a few absolute stonkers to either close up or get past. You have pie through pit stops. Not many more left to pit at the moment. Well, there's plenty of Corvettes left to pit, but uh, not many Ford GTs. Well, there weren't many Ford GTs to begin with. A fairly low turnout for the Ford GT class today. Hopefully that'll pick up when we move forward to the upcoming rounds. Next round, I believe, is Twin Ring Mategi. As Dave Geimer now having a look at Chris Partridge. And there you go, I've just we've got Chris Partridge shouting over, but they just backed off, so Dave isn't going to go right of him, Dave's going to stay behind. 
these two obviously not wanting to trip over each other after having driven such clean races so far. And, uh, Dave Guy uh, backed out before anything could come of that one. And Chris Partridge was ready to just give him the position. Uh, little mistake there from... Gr oh, and they've come together! They're working so hard to keep it clean with each other there, and that Dave Guyman's just run into the back of Chris Partridge as Chris got a poor run off the final corner. The bus stop chicane. Which isn't really the bus stop anymore, it's just referred to it, in my mind at least. Just the final chicane, but there we go. Yeah, I believe that we have got or have had Mark Bird. Have we? Yeah, Mark Bird must have been in the pits or has he been in the pits? No. Nick Nick Vestige he is in the pits though. I'm getting confused between the TFR cars because I was I was just looking and I'm like I'm sure that one of them must have been to pit lane. And it is uh, it's Stefan Coppens. I remember now. I even said that it was going to pit lane, so my short-term memory biting me in the back as per usual. And Mark Bird has just entered the pits and looking further back, Stephen Van Helsingen capitalised on Chris Partridge and Dave Guyman coming together. He's got his way through past Chris Partridge and is now working on catching back up to Stephen. Not himself, obviously, but Dave Geimer. And we've also got Arthur Kirk Paulson in the pit, so it'll be interesting to see where he comes out in relation to UHP. And uh, has got him. Not by a great deal, but Yuha has maintained position. Looks to me like Arthur may have made up maybe half a second a second, but not enough to do very anything about it. Mark Bird, though, has lost a lot of time to Stefan Coppens. Those two now closed back up considerably compared to when they were running before. Roderick Croonan, I believe, is the last man standing in terms of pit stops in the 4GT class unless he has just been making up lots of time of course he is now much closer to second and third in that 4GT race as we head closer and closer to the hour mark two thirds distance the moment at which most riders give a sigh of relief and realise that they're comfortably past halfway and don't have too long to go Steven Van Helsingen, a charger after having to start from pit lane, now closing in on Dave Geimer. Simon Geimer still circulating without a pit stop, currently second position, third position rather, in his class. Jano Ratakainen coming in second as the Pani Linaluoto, our Corvette leader, is currently in the pits. And I think he's going to maintain his... Yep, yeah, he's made a pit stop and he's maintained the lead through the entirety of his pit stop. Jano Maskainen, despite not pitting, stays behind in what is currently second position, but I believe is a net fourth. Simon Geimer also staying out, having just made his way past Nick Vestigi to put a lap on him. Nick Vestigi still the leader of our 4 GT class. Another thing that we have passed by recently, Christian Nuslian has made his way past Chris Partridge on track, I believe. Um, I think they've both pitted, so yeah, that's just sorting itself out. Um, Mark Bird, Stefan Coppins, the two TFR drivers, very close together now. And Mark Bird with the fresher tyres, but uh, Stefan Coppens seemingly 
having picked up the pace since his first stint and is trying to keep in touch with his teammate who held second for the whole first half of the race. We are waiting for two Corvettes to pit still. That's Jano Matikainen and Simon Geimer. Everyone just circulates fairly far apart. Uh, obviously, we have got those two TR cars in the 40T class very close together. As I've just clicked away. For a moment. Oh, and Jano Matikainen has put it round, trying to pit lane. That will lose him a bit of time. It's going to lose him a lot of time because he has damaged the front right corner of that Corvette. Simon Geimer entered pit lane as well, but doing a better job of it. Now let's have a quick rewind here and see what happened to Yano. Oh, he tried to accelerate into pit lane and got on the grass. Very heavy hit to the front end. He is going to be spending quite a while longer in pit lane than he originally intended to, I think. That has allowed Arthur Kirk Poulsen in third and Yuha Pai in second I have said by again P through so net positions now become actual positions for the Corvette drivers Mark Bird and Stefan Coppins were close together but it looks like Mark Bird is stretching out the lead that he built up in the first half of this race over his teammate and is Dave Geimer is Dave Geimer going to get the overlap that he wanted on Simon yep he has made it work. He is going to go around the outside of Simon, and Simon is going to slot in in front of Stephen Van Helsingen. Nothing Simon and Dave can do can take them apart from each other in this race, or in fact many races that we've seen them racing in the same class in. Very, very similar pace, and it uh, be interesting to see if they can keep Stephen behind them, because Stephen has been driving very quickly, and in fact has got the run on Simon Geimer now. Is looking to the inside, but it's a bit too far back to make a move. The slots back in. So, battle resumed between the two Geimers, and now Stephen Van Helsingen. It'll be interesting to see. Well, Jano Matkainen has just left the pit lane, so he's, he's nearly a lap down on the leader of his class. Tapani Linaliotto coming up behind him has actually made his way past Chris Partridge after Chris finally made his pit stop. Last of the late pitters. Now, I've just had a word through. There were one minute of and it doesn't look like just optional, but repairs that he had to make on that car to make it roadworthy again. So I believe, it, looking from here and looking at the way it's having to drive it, there is still damage on the front end of that Corvette. So it's going to be a gruelling 30 minutes for Yano if he can sit through it. The car's still crabbing a bit. The, the front right is not pointing in the right direction and is only going to cause himself problems if he continues on. as we keep our cameras focused on Simon and Dave Geimer with Stephen Van Helstingen just behind them thinking maybe they'll come together maybe I can just take them both at once got to be sizing up his options here who wouldn't be
Steven Van Helsing again, not quite close enough to make a move coming up the back straight. Again, I apologise for the lack of corner names coming out of my mouth. I had them on Tuesday for the touring cars and I've just lost them all today, so I'm just going to give everything generic names for the time being. That's the, this little battle. Both Geimers and Stephen Van Helsingen come up on the third and second place cars in the 4GT pack of Stefan Coppens and Mark Bird. Stefan doing the right thing, holding the line. He's going to have to stay at wide through the entrance to pull on there just to let Dave Geimer through and I believe just coming through into the following corner we're going to see Simon Geimer try and make it. No, he's going to stay behind playing the sensible card. But even though Stephen Van Helsing and made a little mistake through four and he's going to stay right up behind Simon Geimer through this section. In fact, he's going to try and catalyze by using traffic, but I think the traffic's in the wrong position. No, it isn't. They're going to go three wide. It's not going to work. They're coming together between Simon Geimer there and Stephen Van Helsing. And Stephen's going to take the position anyway. A racing instant, but tense nonetheless. They're both just trying to make their way around Stefan, who is doing everything he can. He's holding his line. He is doing what you're meant to do as a slower class. He's just been a part of a little instant there. Simon Geimer losing out. Stephen Van Helsing and moving forward. I don't think there'll be too much damage there. Mark Bird, the next TFR car for these two to negotiate. Let's hope it's not quite as dramatic for them this time. Another interesting pointer. We've got a battle for second position in the Corvettes, possibly emerging, as Arthur Paulson has got his foot down and pulled right up to the back bumper of UPRP. Yep, Simon Geimer now falling right off the back of the little battle that was going on there. Tough break for Simon, who's driven what is realistically a perfect race for his position. No mistakes, not doing anything particularly wrong and he's had to pay the price when he's come up on traffic and had too many decisions to make and get run into by Stephen. Arthur and you are very, very close together. These two running quickly and fairly distin distinguished racing drivers here on iRacing. It will be interesting to see what they do when and if they do have a battle for the second spot on the podium. I think that Tapani Lin Alioto is pretty safe up at the front. He's been running there all race. He's got a 45 second gap to second. He could probably drive the final lap in reverse and still win this one at the moment. So, impressive show from him. Currently watching this battle unfold. On board with Arthur Beck Paulson now. Chasing down Yuha or trying to. Yuha much better couple of laps put together there. It's a bit slow that lap actually, but um he, he seems to have pulled away from Arthur compared to the last couple of laps where we've seen them bumper to bumper. Diamond Geimer, not one to give up easily, has decided to catch back up to the Excuse me. The rear of Stephen Van Helstingen. And if either of these two, Stephen or Simon, could get their way back up to Dave Guyman. Dave Guyman's got a bit of front end damage, so no doubt his aero is slightly worse for wear down this long straight. So if they could get behind him, they could just drive straight past.
as most of the battles seemed to have thinned and spread out. Simon Geimer and Stephen Van Helsting are still the two closest on track. Although Stefan Coppens is making every effort to catch back up to his teammate Mark Bird and have a, another crack at second position in the 4 GT class. Again, as is the case with a lot of races like this, everything just calms itself down a bit too much. And that, I guess the main danger of everything calming down for the races is that if you allow yourself to relax when you're racing difficult cars around a difficult track, you start making mistakes. As Simon Geimer has just made, he's gone wide at the top of Eruge and lost a bit of ground to Stephen, so even that battle now is spreading itself out. So was oh, and Stefan Coppens has made his way past Mark Bird. And I'm just gonna have a quick look to see what went on there. And it looks like Mark Bird just didn't get it slow down or turned in properly for the first corner of the lap. And so Stefan Coppens just got his head down and drove straight back by. Now Mark Bird who's been the quicker of these two drivers all race is going to have to be the hunter instead of the hunted and do his best to close down Stefan Coppens and retake that second position they are teammates so you'd sort of think they're not going to trip over each other unnecessarily but second position every step on the podium worth so much in a race Another battle that we might have soon is Chris Partridge having a crack at the the limping and injured Jano Matakainen. His car still looking like it's worse to drive than the Corvette normally is. I'll keep an eye on that one. Let's see how it pans out. And Mark Bird has gotten back past Stefan Coppens. And Stefan Coppens does not have a running engine anymore, by the sounds of it. In fact, I'm just going to have a quick look back and see if his engine blew. Yep, Stefan Coppens has had an engine failure. He may be misshifted, that was entering Blanchemont. So Stefan Coppens who was running in second position is out of the race now I believe that that is going to promote the consistent um, well I say consistently had that spin earlier but Tommy Bushnell, Toby Bushnell who started in pit lane has now managed to get himself into third position in 4GT class through what is essentially some attrition from Stefan Coppens horrendous look there for Stefan who had been driving such a good race this of course allows Mark Bird back up into second and gives him a good half a minute of breathing space on Toby Bushnell so that's pretty much settled the top three positions in the 4 GT class I think Stigi is still leading not just a little bit either he is leading by a lot at the moment whilst I'm just having a quick check around I believe that well there is 
Some close driving still going on between Stephen Van Helsting and Anne Simon Geimer, but they're not close enough to be having a crack at each other. So, with 20 minutes, or rather 18 and a half minutes to be exact, remaining in this race, I'm going to run you through the order. Leading and dominating by 53 seconds in our Corvette class is Tapani Linaluoto. In second place is Yuha P, who is only three seconds ahead of an occasionally charging Arthur Kirk Paulson. Fourth position is Dave Geimer, with the fifth and sixth battle waiting to happen between Stephen Van Helsting and Simon Geimer. Seventh is Christian Nuslian. Eighth is Jano Maskeinen with that damage. And ninth is Chris Partridge, who will no doubt be looking for a way past Jano in the near future. In the 40T field, Nick Prestigi is leading by a similar margin to the one that Lin Alioto has in the Corvette. Mike Bird, second in the 4GTs, with Dobie Bushnell recently inheriting, in, inheriting third. I believe I said third for Mike Bird. He is second. After Stefan Coppens blew his engine, very, very bad luck there for Stefan. Roderick Crunen is running in fourth, and the last remaining 4GT running in fifth, Reino Tani. Real bad luck for those 4GTs, a low turnout, and then the majority of them having to retire so far this race. Lots of bad luck, a few big incidents so far that have stolen drivers away from us. And whilst I've been saying all of that, Chris Partridge has indeed got past Jano Matakainen. I'm just going to have a quick look back to see what went on. And it was just a case of Jano not having any aero anymore. Very slow on the straight, and so Partridge just went by. Might even been that Jano led him by. And Jano's gone back to pit lane, so he's obviously thinking this damage is just not drivable. I need to either repair it or call it a day. We'll see if he does choose to repair or whether he just retires from this one. He is now the last car circulating in those Corvette in that Corvette pack, so if he stopped now, he would finish ninth and no lower. Everyone just um facing themselves now for the final quarter of an hour of this race. Uh, the drivers you see remaining, minus Yano who has had a, a few moments and bad fortune so far, and have just been driving the consistent race which you need to do here at Spa. It saves you from instant and it means that you can keep going. Um, I don't know, I, I guess many people might just be in a situation where they're worn out after an hour and a quarter of wrestling a GD car around Spa and so they're just going to sit back and say I'm happy with where I am I'm not going to push forward, I'm not going to make a move, I'm just going to sit here and be happy that I've made it this far the only place on the track where that might not be the case is if Simon Geimer can catch himself back up to Stephen Van Helsting who has in fact made a bit more of gap probably six or seven tenths of a second at the moment it's not much but it's more than it has been as we are joined now, through Race Radio, still sitting in his car in pit lane, Jano Matakainen. Hello Jano, how are you doing? Hello. Bad. Yeah, it's bad and understatement for your race. You seem to have been in the wars, driving it off the track and hitting the walls entering pit lane. Yeah, well, at start of the race, my... all tracks and things were because of I had my simports and feet. I lost, I lost the feeling of my pedals completely. I took so them off and I got to something like one, uh, 250s and 240s. So then I did make a stupid mistake at pit uh, entry and just a little bit too much throttle and it's in a wall. 
Yeah, it looked like it just snapped on you as you tried to bring it round through into pit. So, technical difficulties with your equipment and uh, just a few mistakes out on track seemingly costing you what could have been a good finish. I mean, despite going off the track a few times early on, you're running in fourth up until your pit stop. Yeah, it's a shame, but I'm just taking this repairs now and see if uh, car is drivable again. So you're gonna try and continue on? Yeah, and hope if there's more uh, people going on the walls. Well, everyone has been in the walls today, I mean, almost half of the 40T pack now retired from the race, most recent which is the comment. I'm going to wish you the best of luck, Keanu, and obviously an unfortunate turn of events for you today. You had the pace, but it's not the luck. Hopefully you'll see you next round, doing a bit better for yourself. Yeah. Thanks for joining Hopefully. us at the box and taking time out of your race to inform us on what's been going on. Yeah, thank you. As we now look back to the track, and uh, Simon Geimer still just sitting there waiting for Stephen Van Helsing to make a mistake. I don't think Simon's quite got the pace to make a move on him. So he's just had to sit there and pressurise and hope that something comes off at this stage. No one else on the track really in a battle. And we do only have a quarter of an hour left in this race. It has felt like a marathon so far. And that's just for me sitting down in the commentary box. I can't imagine how it is for the drivers who are still circulating. Whilst nothing's going on, it might be worth just giving another mention to our current Corvette and 4GT race leaders, the Pani Len Aliuoto. Just a fantastic job. I mean, controlling not even controlling the pace, just dictating it to himself. No one else has been able to keep even remotely close. Uh, same goes for Nier Castigi in the 40T class. He has been pumping out the laps whilst others couldn't quite keep with it and uh, has really built himself an untouchable gap. So both the leaders dominating today, absolutely showing the other drivers in the class how it is meant to be done. both lapping about two seconds quicker each lap than the second position cars in class Currently watching Stephen Geimer. As you have high P rather has been held up dramatically by a close call with Roderick Crinan, and so now the battle for second position in the Corvette is truly on. Arthur Kirk Paulson just a few tenths of a second behind Yuha now, and Yuha still not able to make his way past that Ford GT, so he's gonna have to get it done now before O Rouge. Otherwise it could be game set and match. And the place given to Arthur Paulson. Indeed he has just about got him by Oru, so looks like he'll remain safe for the time being. And Paulson's no doubt going to get past Roderick Crunen on the back straight here. The Kemmel straight, there we go. As the names come back to me in the final ten minutes of this race. Ten or so minutes 
can't believe that I'm seeing a time different to the race time. As we have got Jano Matikainen back out on track. We'll monitor his progress, see if he is managing that car. And see if it is in fact any better than it was when he decided to pit for further repairs. looks to be a bit more stable so as he said he's just going to continue circulating and hope for his sake that other people hit the battle fortune that he has been having today. As Simon Geimer has backed off a bit from Stephen Van Helsting and once again maybe thinking that if he tries to push on much more he'll start making mistakes and cost himself a position rather than advancing it as he was hoping to so that could be that race over as well, dependent on how it pans out for Stephen. So I was just watching Reno Tani have a bit of a moment, collecting it very nicely though. Reno Tani, the last running for GT in fifth position in class. 13th position overall. We have only got 14 cars altogether still running after 20 started. So, I mean, to lose six in an hour and a half race, especially when repairs are available, it's pretty steep attrition by most standards. So, everyone out, just uh, sitting back and cruising to the end. Oh, minus, of course, Tapani and Aligoto, who is still pushing on and going much quicker than everybody else. Uh, Roderick Krunen just decided to use the track and a few extra miles through Puon literally grabbing at straws as to things actually happening on track now really has quietened down As we've got just under eight minutes remaining of this race. But if I look at where our leader currently is on track, and he's uh, just entering the final sector, the selection of fast sweeping left handers at the end of the lap. So, with eight minutes remaining, I'm going to get this lap and then another two or three left to go. Still, Nanuoto shows no signs of lifting and blowing down. Fast and brave, obviously. Doesn't need to be pushing at this stage, he's got more than a minute over everybody else.
as Rain Otani has just performed possibly the impossible. I'm just going to have a look here for myself. Not quite the impossible. He did tag the wall a bit, but uh, well collected. A huge spin there for Reno. Obviously pushing on a bit more than he should be at this point in the race. A good one to watch anyway. He's still circulating with uh, what appears to be no damage, so a lucky escape there. Hopefully we'll see that on replay. And yeah, indeed we do. Watching the replay of that little instant. As Arthur Kirk Paulson is going to have a look at URP for second place. And poor old Chris Partridge is in a very awkward position here. In fact, Paulson's backed off. He's going to try and get the run through Eau He's made a mistake. He's run wide, so he's just thrown away his chance at second position. Ah, oh, I thought we were going to have a lovely battle there, but um, apparently not. Chris Partridge now moved over and lets both cars through. Arthur Paulson being a bit conservative there though. But URP, safe for the time being, thought we were going to have either a coming together or a bit of a battle there, but uh, obviously not. Settling back into a rhythm and back into the positions they were all in. And uh, Reino Tani has been off again, and it's slightly bigger off this time. He's uh, lost to entering Puon. Yeah, he's damaged the left, right rear rather, of his car and the right front. So he'll be limping it home now. I'm not sure if we'll see that one on replay or not, but uh, it, in fact, we're not going to. It's just turned out a bit fortunately for him. Obviously, his car worn and torn at the end of this race. Having a few instants and mistakes left, right and centre. As Jano Maskainen now is circulating quickly. His car repaired and working after that half spin and contact entering pit lane earlier on. That car working so well that he achieved his personal best lap last time around this course. So it may be late on in the race and he might not be able to do much about position, but absolutely flying and showing us that he could have been right up there at the moment. Uh, Reno Tani has decided after those incidents he may well have gotten a black and orange or uh, uh, less formally known meatball flag for his selection of wall rubs the last couple of laps everyone else just uh, settling back into the race now and saying I'm happy with where I am and I'm not sure but I think that Tapani Linaliotto is about to enter nope not quite his last lap it's going to be close but it's going to be this one and the next one So he's got this lap and then the following lap to complete, as does everybody else, because it's when he finishes, not when you finish. And Simon Geimer's put it round. He's off the track now, recovering. Indeed he's going to, he's going to recover without losing position either. Uh, it, it lets Christian Nisley and get closer, but not close enough to do anything about it, unless Simon puts it off the track for a second time. 
And as he understeers through the corner with no name, that is what he's trying to do. Uh, Yoni, uh, the ever faithful cameraman that, and dream coordinator, I guess you could put it for this one, has just informed me that if we have the Pani Lin Aliuoto make it to the line and make this race go on for a, another lap there are people in that 4GT class who did pit early and may need to take another drip or two of fuel I'm pretty sure the Corvette is safe because none of them pitted particularly early in fact they all pitted after the 50 minute mark so they should have enough fuel to make it to the end unless they have decided to cut it close So, we are indeed going to have a further lap, the final lap of this race is about to be entered in fact, by Tapani Linaliuoto, our leader from start to what is most probably going to be finish here at the end of the following lap, so two and a quarter minutes remaining for this race to sort itself out, white flag is out, so We'll see how that goes as Christian Nuslian is struggling to get past Roderick Croonan. In fact, they ran each other off the road a bit in the first corner. And they're going to have another go at running each other off the road now by the looks of it. As Christian just tucks out too late and he's actually lost some pace. Ah, he's slowing down to let Tepani Linaluoto pass. So, and in fact, it sounds like might be short shifting a little, I'm not sure. So maybe Christian Nuslian wanting to make this lap his final lap. Indeed he is, he's short shifting quite a lot, so there we go. That's what happens if you do push it as close as you can. Obviously running low on fuel and deciding to play it as conservatively as he can from here on in. And Toby Bushnell has, in fact, is stopped. He has stopped on the start-finish straight. He's, uh... Well, I wonder, is this a clever idea? Because Roderick Croonan is on the same lap and is, uh, fairly close behind to Pani Lin Aliuoto. So, I think that Toby will be okay. But if he doesn't keep his wits about him, he is going to lose his podium as Jano Matikainen has had the same idea. Oh, and Roderick Kroonen got it sideways. Oh, dear. Otherwise, that would have been a lot closer than it was. So, there we have it. Our winner of this race. Pani. Pani. Uh, sorry, I'm tripping over my tongue. Lin Aliuoto. We had a few people finish the race. We're now going to see Nick Vestigi come through to take a dominating win in his class, the 4GT category. Won and deservedly so there by Nick Vestigi. A fantastic piece of driving from both himself and Tapani Lin Aliuoto. I'm doing well with my names now, I'm at the end. Oh dear, I promise I've not been drinking. But uh, yes, yeah, so we've got our winners through. It's still the majority of the Corvettes yet to cross the line. We've had Matagainen and we have had Christian cross the line so far I think possibly Chris as well. Here we go. It sounds like all of the Corvettes have gone into fuel saving mode. Uh, Arthur Paulson 
is definitely in fuel saving mode. He is not driving barely anywhere. Uh, here comes Yu Harvey for second position in the race, or second position in the Corvette. And Arthur Paulson is going to take a well deserved third. Chris Partridge is going to finish, I believe, a lap down. Yeah, only the one lap down in eighth position. Uh, really good race now from everybody on track, despite the odd coming together early on and a few later on in the race as well. So, 90 minutes of saint franc complete. And, uh, well, it's all gone fantastically well, really. Most people finishing with their cars intact and having done a very good job. And so, oh, well, that's everything. I don't know if we're going to be able to get a few of the drivers from that race down into the commentary box. Indeed, we are. Here Let's is our 40. And Will Vincent, by the sounds of it. And here is our race winner, Nick Vestigi. So, Nick, um, to say that you dominated that one would be a bit of an understatement. How are you feeling? Uh, surprisingly tired. My left foot hurts from driving. But yeah, I had uh, quite a gap, even though I almost crashed two times and I had uh, overshot my pit saw. So. Well, a well deserved victory from you. Um, did you actually get any rating done, or was it all just uh, maintaining position and circulating for you? What was that, sorry? sorry. Uh, did you actually do any racing with other cars in your class, or was it mainly just circulating for you? No, I was just uh, keeping it on attack and uh, finishing. Uh, were you expecting to be able to pull away quite that much after your qualifying performance? Were you thinking that you were going to have a bit more to deal with throughout the race? Um, actually, yeah, uh, especially since I had no idea how much fuel I had to take and stuff. I had no idea how how much the car is going to use, so yeah, that was a spot where people would have, could have given a lot of time on me, so. Yeah, well, it still panned out well for you and worked out well. So, there we have it, Nick Vestigi, the winner of the 40T class in today's TFR Summer Super Cup race at Spa. Also joining us in the commentary box, it's not a podium finish, but it is a finish nonetheless in a race that was Definitely hard on attrition. Eighth position in Corvette class and overall. Chris Partridge. Hey, I'm absolutely delighted with that result. I did, um, it, well, as usual, it's always a strong field here. And um, to be honest, I didn't have, have much hope or faith coming into it because my practice times, I got down to about 219, which is rubbish compared to the rest of the class, but pretty good for me. But... Um, I managed to bring it down to whatever it was for quali and uh, qualified ahead of the Ford GTs, which is another plus for me. And um, yeah, I had a I had a good race and um, just pleased to finish. My leg held out as well, which is always good. So yeah, I'm delighted. Got some points and uh, the tortoise shall win in the end. Yeah, I, I did see at one point, I'm not sure which of the two Geimers it was, I think it may have been Simon Geimer, decided to... Uh, Give you a little love tap out of the final corner. Yeah, to be honest, it was. I think it was actually my fault because um, through Blanche, just before Blanchemore, I said to him, "Look, you're fa well." I realised he was faster, and I said, "Look, I'm um, overtake on the right." He wasn't close enough. So when we got through the the bus stop chicane, um, I think he probably assumed that that was the point I was going to let him pass on the right. But I went to the right, and that's when it happened. So, in in fairness to him, it was it was. Probably my fault. Well, nonetheless, it was just a little tap. So, a little tap definitely doesn't end races. We saw some much bigger incidents. And, like I say, I mean, as a spectator and a commentator of that one, I have to take my hats off to everyone who managed to bring it on home to the end. So, well done on your eighth position and some solid points. Thank you. I'm going to move on now to the star of the show in the Corvettes. That is Tapani Linaluoto. Hello, Tapani. Well, hello there. And, uh, dare I ask, how do you think that went for you? 
Um, there's nothing much to say. It was quite quite a breeze. <laughs> That's what it looked like from where we were sitting. You're about two seconds a lap quicker than everyone else in your class, and that was a uh, consistently every lap. And you didn't seem to slow down at the end, despite having the gap to. Were you just uh, pushing on because you're in a groove? Yeah, basically. Um, uh, I saw that the gap was so big, so basically I just tried to drive my optimum lines and. Um, not do any big mistakes. Yeah, we, we saw a few of the Corvettes uh, run into trouble lapping four GTs. Did you yourself, not really having anyone to race with, run into trouble when lapping slower cars? No, it was really good. Um, no troubles at all. That's very good to hear. Have you got anything else that you would like to, to say about your race before we uh, move on and possibly finish up for this round? No, I think it <laughs> went quite well. It's always hard to find the uh, the line between going fast and overdriving, and today it was also quite difficult. But um, I managed to survive there on the <laughs> around that line. Yeah, well, you evidently did do a really good job of finding that happy medium between pushing and going off so congratulations to you and uh, I believe that everyone that we have here to talk to um, a really well done to Tupani and to Nick for winning in their classes respectively I think it is now just about time to wrap this one up and uh, that was round five of the TFR Summer Super Cup from Spa 90 minutes, it was entertaining from beginning to end, had a bit of a lull in the middle and well we've seen cars go upside down on more than one occasion in this race so that must mean that it's been good or if not good at least entertaining. Thank you all for joining me and it's been an absolute pleasure, I've loved doing it and no doubt I'll see you in the near future for other TFR events here on Glacier TV. Hope all is well and I will see you next time.